on the random. What up? It's Jens from Hip Hop Twitter Podcast with a quick message to let y'all know that we now have merch. You like t-shirts? Well, we got them. We also have mugs. We have stickers and magnets. So if you want to have any of those items, all you need to do is go to tpublic.com and search Vegas World INC and you'll find everything that you need. Vegas and I would like to say thank you for your support. Peace. Apparently they dragged me on Twitter. I don't give a fuck because Twitter's not a real place. Twitter? Hell no, don't be trying to Twitter me, boy. What up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Hip Hop Twitter. I am your host, Vegas. And this podcast, along with all the other podcasts I produce, is brought to you by the good people over at patreon.com slash hip hop. Now, if you would like to learn more about how you can contribute to the production of this podcast and other content I produce, the link is in the description of this episode. Now, we have a special show, right? We in season two. We had a perfect idea because, uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, me and Yens are not the only two motherfuckers on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> it's called Hip Hop Twitter for a reason. Uh, so we have a special guest with us. Porsche, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. It's so dope. I, I listen to this podcast all the time. I love it. I love your reaction. So it's super, super dope to be here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you, man. We're going to have some fun. You know him. Maybe you love him. Maybe you love him and hate me, but I don't give a shit. But he's the homie. He holding the tweets. Yentz, what's good, brother? Esteban, como esta? Stop that, man. Stop that. <laughs> uh, do you know I told I told people about that, right? Like how I, I got straight Porsche. This is true stories. I was very good in Spanish in high school. Like oh. really good to the point where my teacher was like, yeah, you should pursue this as a career. I didn't. So now <laughs> when I say things in Spanish, the Spanish people perk up and it's like, whoa, Vegas, that sound good. I'm like, no, don't stop it. Nope. I don't remember but what I just said. So <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone. Uh, no, it's some of it's still there, but I'm not going to play myself. All right, y'all. So let's get right into it. Yints. What the f are people talking about on Twitter this week? The Roots are overrated. They are nothing but a pop band. What? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yep, the Roots. The Roots are overrated pop band. God, ladies first, Portia. Did you first of all? Did you see this? I, I did not see that. Thankfully, <laughs> I didn't see that cross my TL. Um, so I, I clearly have all the right people blocked. Um, <laughs> but. but and that is that is the that is a very wild take to me because I feel like the Roots have one of the best um one of the best album runs. Like I think mm -hmm. it's the first like four I would say four albums. I think yeah, I would say like the first four three to four albums are like stellar albums. These are these are not you know like this group is, is not just random put together right. like, this is like top tier lyricism delivery flow i mean they have everything illadelph half-life is a five mic classic album without a doubt so for me um to hear that and, and pop at that like i <laughs> have to question if they've listened to the roots at all like at all like have you heard uh, black thought in any capacity this guy is the opposite of pop <laughs> like i don't right. get it so <laughs> right. i'm just i'm just flabbergasted at this yes i don't i don't understand man is this a person who just watches jimmy kimmel and say man i've seen better late night show bands because i don't understand this person is this a troll this is just complete craziness is what it is to i mean if you want if you want to say the roots are overrated you know, for one, I disagree, but okay, you know, we can, we can manage that. But to, to say that the roots are a pop band. Yeah. They clearly are watching the late night show and <laughs> whatever their opinion of that version of the roots is just sick and crazy. I, I don't know what to make of it. 
It's fucking nonsense. That's what it is. <laughs> I, yo, I, I don't understand how someone... I get it if you don't like the roots, right? right. Like you said, if, if you feel like they're overrated, maybe you tried and people, you know, talked a lot. Of, maybe people in your circle or people on Twitter talked up the roots so much and you had never heard an album. I don't know how, but whatever. <laughs> um, and you said to yourself, all right, I'm going to go check it out. And maybe you were disappointed. You say, ah, a little overrated. But pop? Yeah. <laughs> Has this person ever heard records like clones? It's possible that they have no clue of what pop is. It might just be a new word that they learned and and they're just trying to attribute it to something. You know, right. you know what kills me? I'll tell you what kills me is that this person probably likes Drake. And that's oh, what no. kills me. <laughs> like, I just <laughs> cannot with this. Like, I, I need to know. Like, I don't want to know, but I do want to know what this person <laughs> listens to frequently. But I don't want to know. Like, I don't know. This, is, this right. is nuts to me. Yeah, you know what? When you think about it, right? Even if this person was a Drake fan, I still don't think they understand what pop is. Right. <laughs> because if they heard Drake, how could they listen to The Roots and say, oh, they do the same thing? You know what I'm saying? It's it's, True. it's a weird take, nevertheless. But what else are people talking about on hip hop Twitter? Kid Capri is one of the most overrated DJs of all time. Oh my God! Where, where are you finding these? Sh it's like what? The <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> fuck, they Wait, fucking wilding. I'm telling you, they wilding. Now this person has to be younger. They have to be. Kid Capri for, for a while, like, all right, here's the context for Shorty, because I'm going to call you Shorty. I don't care if you're older and you made this damn tweet. <laughs> <laughs> think of, think of, and for, regardless of whether you hate him or love him, but just think of the spotlight situation, right? Khaled is like a, a, a DJ that's in the spotlight, right? At one moment, you know, it was DJ Scratch, and, you know, it's been a couple of DJs. It was DJ Clue, and it was DJ K Slayer at one point. It's mm -hmm. been... Uh, Jazzy Jeff, you know, it was a number of DJs had like that it spotlights similar to comedians, right? Black comedians, right? Where they act like only one could be on top. Um, there was a time where Kid Capri was that guy, like mm -hmm. hands down. Um, and even when you look at his success to this to this uh, point in his uh, career, there's a reason why he's still around like that because he used to be that guy. I remember, let me tell a quick story, you know, um, not that this is the biggest thing in the world, but to me, sorry, I didn't see too many DJs rolling up to the party like this. Kid Capri had a f***ing tour bus. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about way back when. DJs was pulling up in hoopties or trucks, right? Um, or something like that. Kid Capri had a tour bus all the time, and he still does. That just shows you what level he was on, right? He did one of the early, you know, DJ mix albums, whatever. It wasn't that great, honestly. Um, but nevertheless, man, I, I just can't imagine that this person knows Kid Capri's history to say he's overrated as a DJ. Now, Portia, what do you think? Is Kid Capri overrated? Here's the thing. I wasn't in the United States, obviously, ever because I'm Canadian. Um, so I, I wasn't like physically there. I was alive during Kid Capri's prime, but I was not like outside in the U S when, you know, right. it was like buzzing, but even I know <laughs> that Kid Capri was that guy, you know what I mean? For a really long time. I mean, Kid Capri parties were, you know, anything he DJed at the time was, it, it was going to make some noise. You know what right. I mean? Like th this is not somebody who's, you know, just starting out or he's like kind of like mid or whatever. Over Again, I feel like people don't understand how to use the word overrated. There's a reason why mm. um, people like Kid Capri, people like, or groups like The Roots, you know, um, MCs like Nas, Big, Pac, like these people, th there's a reason why there's such a, huge fan base and people give these people accolades is because they've merited those in their years of right. you know just being present in hip-hop and pushing the culture forward kid capri is one of those people like 
just everything if you go back and like you said vague like you took the words right out of my mouth um if you did the knowledge on kid capri you would understand that he's like a pillar almost in the dj ring back then Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you to call him overrated i mean you're just showing not only your age but your lack of knowledge as well in my opinion and i think that i'm glad i think i saw and yins can confirm i think a lot of people put that person in their place because um a lot of people had stuff to say about it so i'm really glad that you know there are Mm. um old old heads so to speak um that were around and were outside to kind of set that record straight what do you say yens for one it's bullshit But for two, this, to me, this is an example of the conversation that we have oftentimes when it's dealing with lyricism, right? A DJ does not have to be a battle DJ to be a great DJ. And Kid Capri is a prime example. Kid Capri's whole thing is doing parties. He he was one of the first cats that had hot mixtapes out. You know, right. he, I mean, he he also rhymes, so you know, he has albums uh, that feature his rhyming as well. But you know, just because you you can't do a transformer scratch, that don't make you a whack DJ. This right. dude has proven time and time again, and yes, Vegas alluded to it. I've been in a space where. Kid Capri played a party and the shit was jumping. It was, mm-hmm. wasn't nobody, wasn't nobody, you know, complaining or none of that shit. Because guess what? I don't care how much you can uh, beat juggle. You're not going to play a party and just be beat juggling. You're going to get tossed the fuck out. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you can, you can do all of that stuff that battle DJs do you know, in, in a party, you, you're not doing that. No, nobody, even a battle DJ who probably does parties as well. They're not doing all of that. You know, mm-hmm. like Vegas, like you say, uh, a pyramid rapper, right? So, <laughs> so this person is kind of like coming from the pyramid rapper, uh, you know, space, you know, where a pyramid rapper is the epitome of lyricism to this particular person. I, so, that's what I was going to say. You, yeah, yeah. You definitely so, have to so explain this, what a pyramid rapper is. <laughs> well, let's see. A couple of episodes back, I had some rhymes, but I forgot them. But oh, I can they, summarize it for you. Yeah, yeah. Go sun, ahead. Get, moon, get it. And stars. That sun, means, moon, uh, and stars. Sun, right, whatever the stars. F- that means, they get it. <laughs> 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 so you know, like I was saying, you know, it's kind of that. It's kind of the same argument. With with that, you know, you you can be a, a a super technical beat juggling monster, or you can do what Kid Capri does. And guess what? There's room for all of that. All right. So since we have a special guest on hip hop Twitter, it's only right that they bring some outrageous tweets to the uh, <laughs> podcast themselves. So Porsche, the Chronic only has a three to four good tracks and the rest is filler. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, three my or my four Lord. good tracks and the rest is filler. Who yes, is- yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I'm I'm a little speechless. I'm not even gonna front. I'm I'm a little speechless on that one because <laughs> I'm always looking for like yeah, that's a troll. Like they, no one believes that. No one would say that and believe it. <sighs> but but yeah, man. Yes, what what do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no, man. That, is, that that is completely just blatantly outrageous. I mean, <laughs> if you wanna if you wanna talk about the chronic. There's no way you can say there's only three good songs. How the f- do you even say that? You for one, you couldn't you can't have you can't have listened to it. Maybe maybe the only songs you know is what videos were released. Maybe, but then those songs that had videos attached to them are f- great songs. So yeah. <laughs> 
now I've seen people say that they prefer 2001 to the original, you know, the, the initial chronic. And that's, mm -hmm. that's cool too, because, you know, we can't, we're not trying to convince anybody either way. Go for it, Vegas. Tell them what they need to be told. I, sh I don't, I don't have anything for a person. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand. I'm still trying to comprehend. I, I think what I don't like when you think about some of the tweets we've seen and heard on this podcast, it always feels like people are trying to rewrite history, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. like, like they're really trying to say it wasn't as hot back then as you think. You know what I'm saying? They're saying that now. I have a very hard time believing that these people were around then to say uh, about three or four tracks because I feel like even if you knew someone like that, they were one out of the many. Because I knew people, you know, from Brooklyn who they don't like Biggie. You know what I'm saying? But and it's not a hot take because they said that in real time. You know what I mean? Right. But they were one and few that felt that way. Very few, if not the only one on the block, like or what, or in Brooklyn <laughs> or whatever it may be. Um, so to hear somebody say that, I don't. I don't believe that. I mean, maybe maybe it didn't age well for them. Um, but for me, when I put the chronic on, all those memories of when it dropped and how people loved it. Yes, in New York, too. Yes, New York got love for Snoop and Dr. Dre. Don't get it twisted. That was just that crowd. I, I just can't believe that. So, <laughs> them. <laughs> what else <laughs> what else are people talking about on hip-hop twitter well this one i've heard before but every time i hear it I, I feel like i get hit with it again but it's only built for cuban links isn't a classic album and i know vague mm. um and tony from enter the dome um did a whole entire um that time in hip-hop episode i believe about only built for cuban links and you guys broke down um yeah, that album. And that was actually one of my favorite episodes, because as you guys know, that's my absolute favorite hip hop album. So to mm. me, that was a very wild take Um, every time. And I and I know people, you know, we, we hear about it a lot. I know that there are some people who believe it's not a classic, but that album is a classic. That's a five mic album. I I don't I don't understand, man. I don't understand. Like it's it's almost like the same rule applied with the chronic, right? When this thing was out, that was not the consensus, no matter where you were from. Um, just just for an example, right? We're all three from different places. And even back then in 95, that because it came out in the summer of 1995. When I that was my freshman year in college, so I was there early, you know, and you in the dorm and everybody playing music, and that's all I heard. And it wasn't just New Yorkers or, or people from DC, right? That were there. It was people from Cali, people from all over the place, Texas, all over the place. But hip hop heads collectively playing this one album. If that doesn't tell you that it was special. Back then, when it just came out, to say that now, what does Jay Z say? We don't believe you. You need more people. Man, shut your <laughs> Yes. What do you have to say about this? Again, like, I don't, <laughs> I've never personally heard anybody say that. So this is way out of line for real. Like, the, you, this is the this is the kind of thing that we often run into when cats try to be the Grinch. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's liking it, everybody's you know talking it up, and then you got the Grinch over in the corner, man. F that album, that's that <laughs> ain't that good. You know, y'all y'all bugging that you. That's the only kind of cat I could see would be saying that because, as you said, people from everywhere was rocking that album. There's no question that it's a, a five mic as a group. It is a group album. I'm putting that out there, hip hop Twitter. Listen, me and me and Yance are gonna have to fight about that one day. Only, only built for Cuban links is a group album. And oh, I'll even add this. So is Iron Man. All right. 
All right, man, stop it, man. Stop that That's going to be on the next episode <laughs> of Hip Hop Twitter. Ah, <laughs> it's the truth. Stop it with that <laughs> propaganda talk. Come that's on. No, that's no propaganda. It's the God's honest truth. I'm speaking what it. do you think, the listeners, those that's listening to this podcast that are watching on YouTube, do you believe any of these hip hop albums or artists are overrated? Do you believe that? The Chronic really only has about three or four good songs, and the rest <laughs> is trash. Well, filler. Mm-hmm. Or <laughs> filler, but in hip-hop terms, you know what they're saying. They call them That's <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> filler, filler trash. <laughs> right. Leave your comments in the comment section wherever you get this podcast, or you can follow us on Twitter, and we can pick up the conversation there. First and foremost, I'd like to thank our guest, Portia, for joining us for thank this episode. You you want to share anything? You the, the, people could follow you. What? Any projects you're working on? What's up? No, nope, um, no projects except for you can catch us on Apartment Five B. Um, it's willmakebeatsforfood.com for all the Apartment Five B episodes, and we do Twitter Spaces on Tuesdays at six fifteen p.m. Pacific Standard Time, nine fifteen p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and on Twitter at Shershayla Porsche. That's it. Portia said, nope, and then she named everybody in the goddamn Yellow Pages. <laughs> Damn, I just dated myself, right? I said Yellow Pages. The Yellow Damn. Pages. I should yes. say Google or some shit. <laughs> That's what's up. Until next time, y'all, tweet responsibly. Peace. Peace. Bye. Drop, dropping on the random. <laughs>